Once you have the blend file downloaded, go ahead and open it up. It should look like this. A bunch of empties down here and a bunch of cameras surrounding it. Now each of these cameras have an image bound to it. So if I should jump to the first frame, this is the first camera we have on the list and it has the front view of the vehicle. Now these images are added in in the camera tab here and down here in the background images section. Each of these cameras have a different image bound to them. If you take a look down here, you can see we have a bunch of markers on our timeline. Each of these markers are bound to a camera and each of these cameras have a specific and unique image in them. So if I should go into camera view again and I should cycle through the timeline, you can see the images changing when in fact it's not the images that are changing. It's the active camera that is changing. And this is what we're going to be using the whole time to scroll through each angle we need to completely model this vehicle from scratch to finish. Now we're going to set up the workspace the way we would need them to enable us begin modeling this vehicle. Down here you can see we have the timeline. The first thing we're going to do is to get rid of this timeline. We will not need it. So I'm going to hover my mouse on the right here. Now once the cursor changes into a crosshair, left click and then drag it down. And you can see the bottom area should be grayed out. I'm going to release it and that should close it up. Now the next thing we're going to do is to disable these grid lines. So I'm going to hover my mouse up here to where it says overlays and I'm going to click on the drop down arrow. And then the next thing I'm going to do is disable the floor. In cases like this, when I model from images, I split my view into four areas. So what I'm going to do is to split the views into four areas. So I'm going to hover my mouse up here until it turns into a crosshair and I'm going to left click and then drag to the left side until about where we think it divides it in equal halves or as close as possible. I'm going to do the same thing for the left side and the right side, but this time we're going to be dragging it downwards. I'm going to be doing the same thing here. Now if they are close together enough, if we should drag these, they should move together. So something like that. So now that we have these four regions, the next thing we're going to be doing is to be bounding a camera to each view, except for the one on the top left. Now you get why I say this. So let's start with this side here. I'm going to press the N key on the keyboard and go over to the view panel or view tab over here and here where it says local camera, enable the local camera for this side. Now I'm going to give it to any camera in the list here. We have a total of 14 cameras, the initial ones. So we're going to assign it to the same maybe four. And I'm going to do the same thing for this side. So view local camera, and I'm going to give this camera number five. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. View, enable local camera. And I'm going to give it camera number six. So now if we should minimize all this, and then with our mounts in this region here, if we hit numpad zero, it should take us to camera number four. If we should get here and then hit numpad zero, it should take us to camera number five. If we should get here and hit the numpad zero, it should take us to camera number six. And you can see all these angles are different, even though we have the cursor on the same frame in the timeline. Now, if we should move back to this region up here and we should hit zero, we should jump into this camera view, which is the normal standard camera view because we didn't do the same thing we did to these three areas to this region. So it will be affected by the frame number as we cycle through it. So right now we are on frame number one. If I should hit right arrow key, it takes us to frame number two and you can see those that are in the rest of the regions are not changing because they are locked to each camera that we selected. If I keep cycling, you can see it keeps changing. Now the reason I didn't lock this one to any camera is I want to be able to easily cycle through the images to any angle that I need without having to open up the menu here and choosing it here. Because that's what we're going to be doing for the rest of these regions. Each time we want to change an angle, we'll have to hit N and then click here before we change the camera. The arrow key or the timeline frame is not going to change it for us. The next thing we're going to do is to add in all of the collections we're going to need for this project. Now, usually we would add in these collections as we work through the project, but I think we should add them right in the beginning so we won't have to visit this area to adding any other collections we need. I think it's convenient. 
And normally these are collections you will need for any type of project of this specific genre. So the first thing we're going to do is to take the first collection we have here with the cameras collection and the markers collection. And we're going to rename that and call it image studio. Now these contains the cameras and the markers that we have in the scene. Now for these we do not want to accidentally select them and move them. So what we'll do is hover your mouse up here to where it says filter and left click on it and enable here where it says selectable. Now what we're going to do now is to disable the selectable icon for the first image studio collection we see here. Now once we disable that, anything within that collection or any object within any of these collections that is in this collection here is not going to be selectable. So now we can go ahead and in adding the rest of the collections we will need along the project. So the first one I'm going to add in is the guide mesh. The second one I'm going to add in is the vehicle itself. The third one that I'm going to add in is for the empties. We will add in along the way. The next one we're going to be adding in is backup. The next one will be for lattices. And the final one we're going to add in will be for curves. These are all the collections we're going to be needing along the way 